forgot how to use this thing. I thought they were about to go upstairs and uh, decorate or something. Oh, it's one of the ones that keeps it still. Right. You're walking around. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. You can, soon we'll be do, able to do anything Elon Musk can do. Or more. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a fantastic Friday night of live drama, real drama, real life, real life reality TV drama. I will be your host this evening. This is Reality Piano Bar where you are the reality, where you are the product. That's right. Tonight we're gonna be, we're gonna be at the piano. The stage is set where this evening's contestants, unwitting contestants, are gonna sit down, forget they're on TV, and let it all hang out for you, just to entertain you, the viewing cadet. Along with me is my sidekick, my perennial sidekick. Great to see you, sir, Mr. Bernard. Looking good. He looks like he's modeling all the time, doesn't he? Mary loves this guy. But he's my pal, I know I could trust him. Right, Bernard? It's called a gimbal. And it's not a dirty word. Of course, it depends. Anything could be. Tonight we have, uh, while we wait for the guests, actually some of the contestants have arrived and they're, um, they're buying their two-for-one drinks. I'm, I keep looking at the wrong part of this. You're right there. Um, they're, they're up in the lobby bar getting their two-for-one drinks, which you can do as well if you came down here in brick-and-mortar fashion and actually we're on the show, which you're invited to do, two-for-one drinks till 6 o'clock. There's no big events going on here tonight except you, the lounge cadet. You can see the fish are at the, the fish bar getting a drink. You can tell they've been there a while. Their little fish elbows are getting pink from, from the bar. And uh, if you've been putting off getting down here, uh, you can stop putting it off because the place is going to close January 1st for remodeling, which could take up to two years. 14 months, as the big guy told me himself. But you know how these things are. It's a very ambitious plan. Here comes a contestant now, Richie Sellers. Richie's a blues man. He's one of the show business members of the audience, as many are. Nice to see you, Richie. Nice to see you, Howard. You're on Reality Piano Bar. Without a piano. Where you are the product. It's happy to be on a good weekend now. After a week of work. Oh, you were working. Yeah, of course. Maybe. Substitute? Yeah. Substitute work? Yeah. I, I do substitute work all the time. I substitute work with pretending I'm working. Richie's a great reality TV personality. You can tell. He, lo he looks like he's made for reality TV. He's a real guy, that's why. Nobody's more real than Richie. Appreciate that. Whether he's on camera or off. Um, but it, the thing that, that's fun about this, Richie, is how all the lounge cadet uh, reality contestants really forget there's cameras around 
and they, they really just let their hair down. And there's nothing more entertaining than just being yourself, right? Especially these people being themselves. Think they're insecure about it, being on camera? I don't think they are at all. You know, we've been at this a long time, and I remember when everyone got a little bit like PO'd at me because I was aiming so many cameras at them oh, yeah. all the time. Yeah. And uh, but I was just like slightly ahead of the curve because now Big Brother has cameras like all over the place. Oh yeah. You know, if you it's, rob a bank, they're going to know China. like what when you picked your nose yeah. the, the day before. Let me ask you a question. Are they seeing you or both of us? How you got this thing? Right now they're seeing you, Richie. Oh, I didn't understand that. No, I'll have to put on my persona. Well, well, no, this is reality. Your reality persona. Try harder to be yourself. Okay. That's kind of oxymoronish. Here it is. So, Through these golden gates to the entrance, the Delaware entrance, the main entrance to the historic Statler. The contestants will spin through the turnstiles and if Gary doesn't throw them out for misbehaving, then they will be on tonight's show. He could do it too. I've seen him. She can take a walk up into the bar and ask some people what... Well, you know, I would accept, except they're the actual public and they don't they may not be familiar with Lounge Academy. Um, yeah. Although people are, are chill to cameras. I bet I could walk up there nowadays like this. Yeah, it could be even like WBIG TV. I think especially if I took it off the gimbal. Like I'm just, let's see, let's see where Gary is. He's Gary's up there. Frederick. Yeah, let's. Connor? How are you, Howard? It's great to see you, sir. Nice to see you. Good to be seen. Connor is a genius. Uh, Look, he's he's doing something genius right now. And he's chilling. He's still doing genius stuff. How's the, uh, how's the lounge going? Thank you for asking, Connor. The lounge is doing good. We've got the stage set for the Lounge Academy cadet contestants to unwittingly be part of our reality TV show. <laughs> okay. Starting one? Well, that, that's kind of been the theme of this okay. for, for some time. I, did, I didn't just, know. It's just now I can admit it. The, the reality aspect yeah. of it? I got you, I got you. That's hilarious, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've been doing it for years. And uh, just discussing the history of it with uh, Richie, you know, people used to like get annoyed with all the cameras set up for lounge academy parties, and they couldn't understand it. Well, first of all, they, they were like real cameras. Yeah. They weren't phones. Mm -hmm. And then over the years, everybody got like turned into hands, where if you point a phone at them, they'll, they'll pose like professionals and yeah. make their lips get big and do all kinds of things. And um, they, they still, I find they still get a little self-conscious if you point an actual like TV camera at them. But if it's a phone, they, they, more, they just go, they get right into their bit. They're yeah. like a vaudeville at them. Yeah, like a vaudeville at them. Yeah, I mean, they're just so part of our lives now. It's probably just we're, we're desensitized to them. Yeah. So, and they're inter the cadets are very interesting people. We have um, love affairs oh. that are, are like made on Lounge Academy and breakups. No way. And we've got uh, triumphs and despair. Downfalls. And, and um, achievements. And it's just great. And show business people are entertaining, like even when they're not. Sure. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, well, even when they're not. Thousand They're always characters. Well, please stop by the bar tonight, the piano bar. Yeah. Oh, no. I'll definitely As you stop usually by. do. I usually try to. I'm I'll just doing I'll a little bit. I'll let you get of, back no, to you're work. No, you're good. You're good. I'm just editing right now. 
There's some confidential stuff he's working on right there. Just checking it out. There's a few points. What's that for? Um, One of your I, enterprises? I just like write. Uh, this is a show that I've been writing. You're writing a show? Yeah, we're going to try and film it this year. So. See, I told you he's a genius. Not at all. Not even close. Richie, Richie just put Richie just put five dollars in my pocket. Always See that? Always See that? I, I this paper. Richie's a great guy. Gary and Frederick are right over there. That's all we need. Five five bucks. You know, five bucks and, and I'm I'm an adopted lounge pianist. That, that's the engine that makes Lounge Academy go. People some people they you put in like 50 or 100 or so. It's like if everybody really? fell, Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. There's, wow. We call those whales. Wow. Really? Yeah. Actually, I call anybody who pays anything a whale. <laughs> you know? But it's really, a, it makes me feel really good when just like everybody puts in five. You know? Yeah, it does. It just makes, I can't, a psychiatrist would have to like explain it to me. In two and a half months, it's 50. I could say it helps like for the gear or whatever. But I, I'm just guessing, it just works on my psyche. It makes me feel like I'm doing a good job. And that I haven't completely pissed them all off with these cameras yet. But there's plenty of other people if we do. Right, Richie? You know, Howard? Yeah, we, uh, we go back a few years now. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, we're co workers, Richie. We're co workers here. Yeah, I bartend here. I don't I bartend know, yeah. right now, but yeah. I see. That, uh, uh, I've known him since he was a kid. <laughs> Uh, since 2017, around there? Probably, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Howard's awesome. We talk a lot about books, about music. He's a world Thanks, Connor. kind of guy. He Connor's is. the interesting, really interesting guy. You, you two could have some interesting conversations one of these days. Sure will. Connor? Connor. Yeah, my name's Connor. Hi, Connor. Pleasure to meet Richie you. Richie Sellers. Cheers. Pleasure to meet you. Contestant number three tonight in Lounge Academy, Academy is Frederick. Well, thank you for finding us at the bar. Very difficult to know where we are. Well, yeah, it took a while to figure it out. I had to use Google Maps. And uh, Frederick's a natural for reality TV. I think so. I'll come. Find me a find, catch me a catch. Come on, drink some beer. Is pretty Home good. favorite. Marino. Wow. He's also a natural for more than a natural for real. What can I say? We're on channel news. This guy's a big prosecutor. This guy next to me right here. Mr. Big. I hope he doesn't see the camera. This guy for real? Yeah, county prosecutor. Uh, I, don't, I hope he doesn't see the camera because he's a big important guy. He's going to put you in jail. Okay. I don't know about important, but definitely big. <laughs> put you in jail. Looking good, Steve. You, you never know he has COVID. What did I say? A joke that's out of line? Oh, thanks, Steve. I'm, I'm nice try. Nice try. He's gonna throw it at you. You know I don't drink when I'm working. That's called entrapment. Only if there's a. See, and I don't work when I'm drinking. No, we got we got that oh, in common. Yeah. yeah. I like that. That could be for next week's bump. Could very well be. Uh oh, I better make sure I'm within range of my Wi-Fi. I forgot how this thing works. Okay. Yeah. And here we are, contestants number four and five. We have Mary and Brenda. Now the show, now the show is really starting. These are nice to see you, Brenda. Good to see you too. The fellas are up there. Okay. And uh, prosecutor Steve is is with them, Mary. The contestants are here. Let's roll. I already got a tip.
Uh oh. Okay, here we go. Whoops. Never say oops when people know you made a mistake. How do you work this thing? Here we go. Okay, while the contestants. While the contestants are at the bar getting drunk, or at least getting buzzed, I'm down here strategically placing tip slips on their tables. I'm not sure if drinking makes them better tippers or not, but that's all part of this science, the science of Lounge Academy. These are the tip slips which have been formulated in my laboratory. I'm putting, I'm putting a whole bunch of them on the table. I'm probably gonna lose money on them, I'm putting so many here. It seems to help though. It seems like the more obnoxious you are about getting a tip, the more than tip. You gotta twist arms. I compare notes a lot with the uh, valet guys, which unfortunately aren't on tonight because, welcome sir, uh, because uh, I'm the only thing going on. Uh, how come I don't rate valet service for my guests? Oh, I know why, because, because I don't want them to tip the valet guys because then they won't tip me. Okay, I'm now going to tune in to see if I've been talking to myself or if we're really broadcasting. And so I could see comments if I am. I hope I am. I see a red square. That's never good. I'm going to switch uh, microphones now. Maybe I shouldn't. I'll keep, I'll keep this mic on for now on the mobile cam. Because when the guests come down, then we could do some interviews. give you guys a full uh, fly on the wall look. Facebook is uh, really out of sorts lately. I might have to use a, a phone to get on just to see if I'm on. Action needed. Okay, screw that. Of course, at my age, of course you need action. I don't need Facebook to tell me that. Okay, uh... Since the uh, cadets aren't here at the piano yet, I'll take this advantage, take advantage of this time to, uh, overcome some of the deficiencies of the Facebook Corporation. I'm just trying to see the feed like everybody else. Session expired. Thanks for nothing. Here we go. I noticed the, the PC, why am I talking over there, the mic's here. The PC version um, has not been working for me. The streaming part of it is. Here we go. 
Like I can't get on Facebook on the PC. Oh, and Selena's there. Hi, Selena. Hi, Barry. Is it, how's this thing been working? Oh, I can hear me. That's a good sign. Ahoy there, Selena. Wonderful to see you. Thank you for joining Lounge Academy. You're a wonderful lounge cadet. I did some, uh, we did some nice uh, cadet interviews and prosecutor interviews up in the lobby. Though. I wonder if our, our Wi-Fi connection to our control panel here was able to pick that up. Were you able to see that when I was in there? Interviewing the cadets? It's Kathy Moses. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Specials which go till six six o'clock. There's Brenda waving, waving to Brenda up there, and uh, they're all looking at me here talking to myself, which is great. I fit right in that way. Experimenting. Always experimenting to bring next level entertainment to the home cadets. Well, they come if you if you need a big seat, you 
side. If not, they come in half sheets, quarter sheets, depending on what you need. That's what I just think so simple. <laughs> I, I, did, I did so many crafts, so many different things over the years. When I discovered stained glass, I've got a lot of I've got a lot of jobs to do here. I wear a lot of hats. <laughs> oh, looks like my hat. Oh. Well, it goes along with your decorating.
should have brought the ladders. Next time I'll bring the ladders and set them up as part of the act. What do you think of that? I have a raft.
some music down here. I got so much gear. I'm going to turn this off to preserve, preserve bandwidth. We're on austerity bandwidth here at Lounge Academy. I brought a book that um, washed, washed up on the beach that I used to use in, when I was in school. I haven't looked at these songs in a long time. I thought it would be fun to just... They're weird songs. Oh, these are really... This one isn't. I'll make sure I'm not... Uh, picking up weird sounds here. up on the shore that you haven't seen in a while or paid attention to. I wash up on the shore sometimes. Ryan's returning from the lobby bar with a very adult looking drink. It's a beauty. Hold it in front of this camera over here by Brenda. Go stand next to Brenda. <laughs> That's perfect. These are the cadets, ladies and gentlemen. These are the engine of the Starship Piano Bar, Reality Piano Bar.
guess I'm just a lucky so-and-so. Birds in, in the trees, oh, they're so neighborly. They sing wherever I go. I guess I'm just a lucky so-and-so. If you ask me the amount in Marino's bank account, I'd have to confess that I'm slipping. That don't worry me. Confidentially, I've got a dream. That's a piping, oh yeah, pippin. And when the day is through, each night I hurry to a home where the walls I know. Oh, I'm guess I'm just a lucky. related to our friend David Mack. Two, two great ones right there. We're still getting low bandwidth transmission, but sometimes that changes. Could be there's so many people downtown tuning into Loudoun Academy at one time. Your sweet expression Hi, everybody. Hi, Dale. Judith. I think you need a visit, Judith. We've got, uh, we've got a, a lounge seat here just for you. I'll set up. Vicky's going to get on a, the Concord and fly here. Vicky, I didn't tell you I, I met the big guy. Dream. 
It's easy to remember. I remember it. I forgot it. That's a, a Rogers and Hearts. Man, they got a lot of songs that are great. going to be filmed uh, right here in Buffalo, great. Yeah. Uh, probably some scenes in uh, Banshee. I'm going to try and swing some scenes in here too, depending on how things go. Maybe I'll get a cameo appearance. Well, uh, hey, if you want to read the script, man. Yeah, I'll for Hitchcock. <laughs> I'll send you the script if you want to try. Well, just a cameo. Oh, no, yeah, we I got plenty of... Yeah. We, if you got a character that you might want to try and do, there's plenty of, like, smaller characters. I play myself. You want to be well, yourself? Work, oh, work that's even better. The script. That's yeah. even better. Oh, I can do that. I can definitely do that. All right, man. You got it. Have a great night. 
Okay, Connor. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Connor. Connor's a genius. He really is. I'm surrounded by geniuses. I, I attract, I'm like flypaper for geniuses. It's weird. I, you know, I've always been that way. I think geniuses feel comfortable around me because I'm not threatening. And no matter how genius eccentric they are, I draw the fire so that people they, they look normal next to me. <laughs> Must be something to it. I keep forgetting we're not at my place. And I'm now turning my joke amplifier up. We're going to be able to try our other our new secret camera. This is the uh, this is the tall boy. They call these tables tall boys here at the Sandler. It's great to see you, Barbara Fisher. Thank you. Barbara Fisher says hi, everybody.
turned up some more.
I was not able to see a name on that because I can't see it as it happens, but thank you very much. I appreciate it. Which remind the home cadets that for five dollars you can you can adopt a lounge pianist. get that Venmo thing tattooed on my forehead. I'll be a human ATM machine. Give a withdrawal, I'll open my mouth and $20 will come out of your account. Wouldn't it feel great to be a human bank?
Johnson and Sam Kosoa. Kazo. <laughs> I bet you uh, Paul Kokoda knows all about that song. I remember this song because this was my old book from like college. And I think um, I think what's his name sang it, you know. obscure too. and there's a piano going on where it used to be a common thing. Yeah, especially where someone who's playing the piano talks to you. Yeah. It's even more rare. Maybe I should text them. But a lot of people dig it. Some of them come down. Sometimes they do. Yeah. Watching the live stream. Wow. 
Chicago and Selena. And Nick. Oh, and look who's here, Audrey, the founder of the Jackie Jockey, the Jackie Jocko Fan Club, 1953. Great to see you, Audrey. It is Nick. We got a great, a great crowd here tonight around the piano. And we're having a ball. It's Selena, my singing partner. She says we have them dancing in Canada. That's good. They need to dance in Canada. What's the bell for? You'll find out, man. When you get out of line, you're going to find out. Nick wants to know what the bell is for. That's when I got to really uh, restore order. Just, just hope I don't need to use it. So many old songs I haven't played in 40 years. Just imagine someone waiting at the cottage door where two hearts become one who could ask for anything more. Loving one who loves you and then taking that vow. Nice work, you can get it, and you can get it.
several pounds of paper. Yeah, yeah. Everybody needs paper. You're a genius. You get into these things and there's like runs on them. Like everybody runs out to buy toilet paper and you're, you're just going to the bank. That'll be the king, right? Yeah. It's, it's, there's so many shortages now. It's crazy. Uh, it's crazy. Uh, I miss my nephew when he was that street. Johnny Trev. J Trev. It was a lot of fun, man. You got a great guy. He is. Well, it's great to have you back in the academy. Yeah, I can't wait to catch you next time. He's got some gigs coming up at the country clubs. Nice. Well, you know who's accompanying this, right? He's accompanying this thing. Ken Kaufman? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're, we're, we're related to a common cousin. Yeah, he's great. Great guy, too. He's got to get the gift. Yeah. Something to love so, so did my co our cousin. Huh? So did our cousin. Yeah. And he's got a gig coming up at the at the Bittersweet. Okay. We were out of the Glenwood Center for the Arts. Have you been out there yet? Uh, no, I have not. So Jay performed out there about three or four weeks ago. It's pretty nice. I've, I've heard of it, but I haven't been out there. You didn't ask me if I heard of it. You play back the testimony. But the question was if I've heard of it. Oh, I see. There's like another guy from the old days. Did you go to Casey's at her place? Of course. I'm good friends with his son. He had a Rolls Royce, he had a Corvette. I didn't have a Rolls Royce. I got to say that my choice of His nephew um, does music with him, yeah. His jingles are his jingles are part of everybody's brain, right? He's probably the most influential composer in Western New York in, in the history. Like, there's more of Ken Kaufman going through people's brains than Beethoven. You know, if you think about it, right? He went to bed, and I said, yeah, I went to Riverside. You went to bed. We re we resumed. My brothers went to Riverside, Bennett, and yeah, they resumed. Everybody used to, west of Coleman, had to go to Riverside. Yeah. Oh, he's an Eagle Scout, too. He was? He's an Eagle Scout. Oh, no, that's oh, I didn't know that. And he did the uh, composition for the movie Bambi with Andrew Duffy. Bobby, Bobby Jones was on piano, and um, Bobby Mandela played. And Kenny Cochran served in the composition. He's like, really? There's like so many songs I haven't seen in years in this book. It's like visiting old friends. Old friends.
party's over. It's time, it's not over, time to call it a day. Burst your pretty balloon and take in the moon away. It's time to wind up that masquerade. Just make your mind up, the piper must be paid. The party's over, candles flicker and dim. You danced and dreamed through the night and seemed to be right just being with him. No, but moon is moon is a word for singers. <laughs> moon, moon, moon is the best word in a lyric because you can you can milk it. Take take in the moon away. You can you can you always have to milk the word moon. That's what I learned from all these performances. I know, but mood isn't as good a word. Moon. Moon. So you can't do that with mood. Take in the mood. It's like then you trip over the D. The moon, you can, you can legato. Fred, Frederick understands these things. The word moon. The word moon is the best word, lyric word ever made for songs, right? Moon. Every time the word moon, you can just milk it, right? The moon. To the moon. to meet after work on Friday. That's a good concept too. That, that Richie just 
that Richie just encapsulated a beautiful concept, a nice sound biteable concept, a great place to meet on a Friday after work. Okay, I gotta put this book down. I can't stop myself. How is the music you play today the future flowers for tomorrow? Well, thank you, Richie. jobs to do. Yeah. Because tomorrow is autumn. All our tomorrows are autumn. Well, there you go. Today, I may not have a thing at all. Imagine not having a thing. Except for just a dream or two.
But with you there by my side, I'll soon be turning the tide. Just wait. That's that's as sharp as these as these classics go. They go up to like one sharp. G flat. Well, G flat, G minor is a biggie. No, you don't see you don't see a lot of G flat, except maybe the um, the bridge, the bridge to like. Um, Don't think of pressing fingers. It's a, just think of the, the motion. It's not about pressing this and then that, because you, you can't do it that way. It's not just a psychological thing, it's a real thing. You just, just do the motion. Everything's a motion. The motion of the ocean. Yeah, but you know what? There's nothing wrong with the wrong notes are the right notes. It's all on how our ear uses them. See, I'm constantly changing direction because I actually made mistakes and they go in a different harmonic direction to make it work. That's where the creativity comes from, from the mistakes. Because you can't, I can, I can never be as creative as my mistakes. They're very inventive. here. Barry wants to know, enjoying this, thanks and hello. Mary, Richie, Ryan and Barbara, Barry saying hi to Marino. He's at the beach with a big uh, drink with an umbrella in it. He said hi to Richie. And Selena? Oh, 
Selena's, she's wild. She's hoping I have to use the bell. This is, cool. this is for Gary Marino. This is his theme song. We play him in and out of the lounge. Every pianist in town, when they see Marino walk in, bang, they go right into this. Anytime he, set, he stands up, they gotta go into it. Why try to change me now? I'm sentimental. So I walk in the rain. I've got some habits. Start for the corner, turn up in Spain. Don't try to change me now. I'll sit and daydream. I've got daydreams galore. Cigarette ashes.
great group. Here we go. It doesn't look like Nick made it tonight. Sometimes he comes and sometimes he doesn't. As far as I know, he's doing fine. Um, oh yeah. Nick's probably home watching. Nick, are you out there? There we go. We've regained camera three. Hours away, we're just going to take a break.
Great to see you, Ann. Great lounge cadets. And I've got you. Oh, we'll do it in this key instead, Ann. song um, who wrote that song I don't know I already I'd have to look and see I don't know I don't know off the top of my head I'm right yeah I know isn't that something these four guys that write these songs I got a song just for Terry and Tina it's their theme song. I used to play it, play it for them over at the mansion. It's a, it's a great song. No, he didn't write anything. I think he, I think he's got his. Oh, it's written by Cole Porter. That bell has kind of, it's kind of thematic with the song that I want to, that I want to 
do. Here it is. This is for this is for everybody who lives in a schoolhouse. Frederick and Marino, because that's what we do at Lounge Academy on live stream. When somebody leaves, we gossip about them. So, so, so what club do you think they're heading? Oh, they're going to the sportsmen. They are appearing. They are appearing this evening at the Sportsmen's Lounge on Amherst Street in Black Rock. And they looked, they looked like they were, they looked hell-bent. They looked like they were on a mission when they marched down here to heading there. Sportsman's is a fantastic, become an institution. They've done such a great job over there with their recording studio, their, their ever-expanding venue. What an amazing job they did with those buildings. They just like they tore out like a second floor and made a loft and a balcony and it's all you know properly set up so it doesn't sound like an echo chamber acoustic because they're sound engineers. Small bands, big bands. Any 
size you want, my God, at the sportsman's tavern. And they did not pay me to, to say all oh, these nice things. But they can if they want to. We forgot to we forgot to cajole we forgot to cajole Marino into having an after party for me. How did we do that, Ryan? How did we forget to do that? Did we forget to cajole Marino into having an after party for us? Um, we we did not even attempt that, but it seems that you may have had somewhere to go. Yeah. It did seem that way, but yeah, usually when he goes out, he doesn't have the party. Well, I guess he can't have a party ever. Well, I just thought maybe he'd sandwich it in. It seems, I don't know, the pattern seems that if we have it one week, we probably won't have it the next. Come to think of it, that does seem like a pattern. Or at least it's not guaranteed. Take the 20 day moving average of Marino's parties. They might say we had one last week and it is a good one. All in honor of my friend, which was not the intention, but still, I appreciate it. And I appreciated it as an after party for me, even though that's. It really took the place of the. Because I always used to think of the Black Rock Riverside Oktoberfest as my de facto birthday party. For years, I never had to throw a party for myself or ask anyone else to throw one because Black Rock Riverside Oktoberfest. That's a big party, too. But since COVID, that hasn't happened. But yes. Yeah. But Gary Marino came through for me last week. He sure did. That was a great party. Yes, I have a Black Rock original. I just got up from it this afternoon. Oh, my family goes way back to Riverside High School. They all laughed at Christopher Columbus when he said the world was round. They said Marconi, wireless was phony, it's the same old cry. They laughed at Brenda, wanting you. I was reaching for the moon, but oh, you came through. Now you have to change your tune. They all laughed and then all gone high. But oh, 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 who's got that last laugh now? See, that was the laugh. That was a musical.
sing. She sang this title, but she did not sing this song. I wish everybody on Smule would realize that, because they keep faking me out. It's like, oh, time after time, and then it's the Cindy Lauper version, which, which is fine, but it's, it's not the one I think it is. This is from It Happened in Brooklyn. I'm not on the camera. This is horrible. Camera mount hardware problems. Luckily, I got spare parts back at the ranch. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
Selena. Thank you, Selena. We're here, we're here doing this every Friday night with the lounge cadets, dishing the dirt about the lounge cadets that aren't here. That's why you should always be here. It's dangerous not to be here. Yeah, Brenda knows. She figured that out really quick. Near perfect attendance. She did have a note from her trip advisor when she was out of town. I think she tuned in too when she was out of town. Once I read the life of a millionaire, spent all my money, didn't have any care, took all my friends out to the Stafford for a really good time. songs anytime soon. We're all ready though. We're all prepared. I paid off my credit card today, just in case, from 1972. I was locked into, I was grandfathered into a good interest rate. Actually, in the 70s, the interest rate wasn't so high. I think it was like 20%. things change, the more they stay the same. I'd like to thank Dan for all the great work he did tonight. And the great one.
before the girls on the roller skates bring it out. cigarettes, thumbing cigarettes from each other, letting it all hang out, and they're saying to each other, what is this thing? This funny thing called love. Just who can solve this mystery? Why should it make I mean, right now there's, you know. Especially the standard development. Yeah. The value is just shot up. Oh, yeah, you think so? Hello. <laughs> it's great. I'm glad I was happy for you. Thank you. You stuck it out there. I know. You can't wait on this expansion. The, the exhibition center, you know. You can't wait for that. That's kind of difficult. Yeah. Well, I, I kind of didn't want it to happen because. I, I, kinda, I wanted to be here for whatever comes next, you know? Even if, in theory, by some craziness, they did. They'd have to buy it out anyways. And you're better based on your head. Yeah. Going at, they, they were going to give me another spot, too. Uh huh. And move the house. <laughs> but, um, hey, you know, whatever. You got to roll with it. When you, I tell myself, you know, when, when you move by the airport, you can't complain about the airplane. So. 
when you when you move into like the best location left in New York State, you can't yeah. complain when they want it. Um, yeah, but that thing with the uh, it, that thing with the uh, expanding over here. Yeah. Like I said, even if they do, this was genius what he was doing. Because um, have you met? The, the I, I finally met him last week. Uh -huh. right. And uh, you know. Jamil, he, he's the best thing that since yeah. the last the He just bought the building next door. Yesterday. That's a great building too. I love that Mahoney building. Oh yeah. Yeah. He did a great job with it, Marine Middleton. She was great. You know, I met him. I introduced myself on the sidewalk. I was walking back from the post office. Yeah. And I hadn't met him yet, you know. I said, I got to, you know, so I've been meaning uh, to run into you. I'm your neighbor over here. And, and, you know, he's being real nice and everything, like he always is. And I said, oh, yeah, I play, I'm the piano player here, too. Yeah. All of a sudden, he got all, he, he, he really got excited. He says, I've been dying to meet you. I've been hearing all about you. Yeah. He, he says he, he wants us back when they reopen, you know. And yeah. So that made me feel really good. He was treating me like I was the celebrity, you know? I hear they're going to shut down the first of the year and do the rehab. That's Six what I heard. Yeah, that's, that's a genius move. Well, and it's very ambitious. To, the core move back to Buffalo. It's unbelievable. Did you, did you check the two, two weddings tomorrow? Bowl and ball over here? Oh, yeah, that's... Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Things are coming back. I wish we were a few years younger. Well, hey, listen, I got a friend that just moved back from Vegas. This is in five years. Vegas is going to be out of water. We're moving the dam to the Colorado River. Really? It's already down 100 feet. So we're going to have competition for waterfront. They can't touch our water. It's part of the Great Lakes. They won't need it if they're underwater. What's that? Vegas. They're not going to be underwater at all. Oh. No, no, there's no water out there. Oh, I thought you said they're going to be underwater. No, no. no. The, 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 oh, they're going to be out of water. Colorado River's down oh. 107 feet of water. I'm going, to start, I'm going to start bottling water out of my tap so we can, yeah, that we can sell it. They're bottling the water up in California where they're short. they got acres of green lawns, which they don't need, instead of desert vegetation. I, I, I don't know that. Yeah. Well, nothing's supposed to make sense. No, nothing does, exactly. Especially in Buffalo. Now, Mr. Mills, the greatest thing since his last Friday. Oh, he's like lightning striking. I wish we had a few more but years. The, ch the chances of ever getting a developer like him yeah. to land in Buffalo, or anywhere, really, is like, you know, I'd love to know incalculable. I'd love to know his rationale. Is it cheap land or cheap pricing? Or he sees a future for Buffalo? I don't know. You know, you know, it seems to me like his his attitude is like he's like a classic car collector, and he he buys these places just to fix them up to see what how good he can make them. That's his psyche. That's his. Uh, Even if he doesn't know like what they're gonna be, he lets it kind of play out. I mean, these are projections down the road to be profitable. It's not gonna happen. Yeah. Well, he's got. He's not just here. He's in Vegas. He's in Chicago. He's in L.A. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, what a guy. Thank God he didn't have to kiss the Pope's ring, you know, with the politicians and everything. He just goes ahead. Carta Blanca. Go. He does. He just starts moving. Like, Thank he didn't God. even own the Hyatt. He started remodeling it. In the old days, though, remember you had to go through all the politicians in Buffalo, kiss the Pope's ring, as they say? Not him. Oh, is that right? He just goes. What are they going to do, stack it? I hope not. I'm sorry. No, I'm going to stick, stay here. It's great catching up with you. Likewise. I'm not going to get you that address in my next school. Except Tina stole my class. So what's, um, what's chronically backordered in your industry? Everything. Toilet paper, towels, uh, uh, gloves. Do you do takeout containers and stuff? Oh, yeah, tons, tons. Now that must have been something during the uh, lockdown. I, well, I got, I, the foam is becoming, uh, you know, New York State's banning foam containers. They are? Most of the year, yeah. Oh, I didn't know so that. So I've got recycled containers now. Oh, the brown, the brown ones? Yeah, everybody's going recycled. A lot of people are. A lot of people are environment, you're going to pay I know. double the price. I know the cu customers want them. A lot of people do. I don't know why they want to save the planet. 
they, they did a special on Greenland today. The ice cap caps are going to be gone in about 20 years. It's awful. Uh, well, 120 years of uh, automotive of emissions alone. I know I've left my car running this whole time. <laughs> oh, no, you didn't. All I had to do was sit there. People are going to think I'm a genius when actually I just wasn't smart enough to ever figure out how to get the place open. But uh, do you have any plans to get the ball rolling or anything? Well, I mean, I don't, ha I don't have like a timetable. It's just something I, I work on. I, I, I pick away at it. Like, I've got a you know, like an order of operations that I'm doing. I, I'm, I've got it like multi-tiered, right. so I can do different, like, like I'm working on a commissary now, so I could get a commissary license, yeah. and then I could expand my hot dog business. I think I could do a oh, good one. Yes. Well, donuts, maybe we should do the donuts too. Yeah, I, I'll be right there. Well, with, with the hot dogs, the only people that have dessert. Donuts. We'll, we'll do the donuts maybe as special events. Oh, yeah. See, the thing is, a donut, a, a, the donuts are very labor intensive. Like, I work my ass off to make those donuts. With a hot dog, it's great. You just stand there and, like, interview whoever, whatever big shot is standing there on the sidewalk on Delaware Avenue and find out what's going on while I'm cooking his hot dog. And, and you know, and then you hand it to them, you're done. And you make more money than on, than on the, the donut. The donuts, I'm in my kitchen. Do hmm? you make any money on the donuts? Well, you make like like 50 cents an hour when you figure out your your labor. You know, you'd have to charge like $15 a donut. We sold. We charged three dollars, Brenda. We we had the highest priced donut in Western New York in the world. <laughs> and your donut, and if it's four or three cups, it's a good two. What's the thing? He was working on a project, and I said, "Oh, these are Howard's donuts." And in New York, and New York, well, I'm just We were on the news with those donuts. Yeah, yeah. 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 Tina was a great, a great donut customer. She's a great customer for everything we do. She humors us with every dumb project we do. I could start a space program and she'd be sitting in the seat buckling up. No, no, it was, uh, it was. They were called. They were called the 1901 uh, bees or something. I forgot what they were called. 1901 L's, yeah, they were they were made with lard. Yes, it's okay. And they were these, these big fat lard fried things. And then and they were they were glazed. I would dip those things in boiling boiling sugar junk that I'd make. I love the hot dog business so. I only tried it out for a few days, but I did it just to um, just to make it turnkey. You know, I got the licensing, got inspected. I, you know, I got all the permits and everything. And I could, I could, I could open up for hot dogs whenever I want, um, which is great. Which is great to, to know. But I'm not. I'm build, so I'm building a, I'm building a. Uh, Commissary, so that so I have my own commissary because right now I have, I have to use other commissaries. So um, when I get that, it'll coincide with a basic food service um, restaurant license for for the bar, so we can have a basic basic menu at the bar. Then I'll be ready to qualify for a bar license. A liquor license, SLA. Yeah. See, that'll come after the, because you need the food. But your felonies won't show up on the record, right? they, they, No, I've got that all, I've had it. Paul Cambria took care of all that for me. He changed my name. <laughs> my, he changed one of my social security numbers. <laughs>
But that's that's the plan. You, Terry, plan Terry asked well, my business plan. That's for a sign I get a billboard. He did, yeah, it's like, how do you feel? You know, nobody want, really wants the answer. Especially if it's bad. Hot dogs. Co commissary license. Hot dog. Restaurant license. Bar license. Lounge Academy. Hot dogs and lounge academy. Yeah, I love, the, I love hot dogs and I love the hot dog business. Charcoal broils, sailings. I eat them every day. I like to, I like to keep my, no, it, it's great. My cholesterol, I'm off cholesterol medication. You know why? Because I eat fat and I, don't, and I don't eat a lot of sugar. And that's actually, that's the new theory on cholesterol. Yeah, well, yeah. Before that. Not too much. A little bit. So what did he say? Oh. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what their format is. Well, when you separate it's a place over at the Lafayette. Yeah. It's a room. It's a room at the Lafayette. Yeah, it's an establishment. Yeah, it's a complete establishment. Yeah, we're not sure if it's um what the format is. Of course, they could they could change the format, but um, it sounded like it might be it might be like classical music, more like classical music. Um, by the way, it was written up. Mary's a, a classical critic, you know, for the news, what she was for 25 years. So she read it and she goes, no, I think, I think it's classical because the way they're describing it. I said, well, maybe, you know. And then they got Jay, and he's, and he's, a, he's, a, you know, he's a classical singer. So, but they could, you know, they could probably roll with things and do whatever, you know. Um, so I'm not sure. Hi. I might, I might go. I know that the uh, soft opening is October 21st, Thursday. So Mar Marion and me might pop in there and see just to support it and see what's, see what's up. Thank you for the presenting of the Right over in the Lafayette. Lafayette Hotel. Did you tell them about you? She didn't tell me. You can get a job there. I'm going to tell her to hire you. That's what they all say. She hasn't played since the competition. Mary, Mary plays classical too. You know, she, she, she left it and then she came back. Few years ago, and uh, you know, she's actually better. You know, she's better than before. Is that weird? If you came back, you might find you're better than you were when. You know, I mean, you'd be you'd be rusty, but once you're like back up to speed, you, you might find you're actually better. But something keeps happening in our mind. I know it does. I know it's gonna get sharper. Yeah. About things like music. It's working else. in the background. Not everything else but music. Yeah. At the, at the cost of other things.
Thanks, Terry. I'm, I'm fine, though. I got a Diet Coke I'm working on here. see the tailor. I didn't think about that. I can wear two jackets. No, that's a good point, you know, because I did I did lose uh, a few belt uh, holes. Oh yeah, a few notches, huh? Yeah. What happened? Is your, is your diet or? I, it's from eating hot dogs. <laughs> They're not Hebrew nationals, that's for sure, right? They're Salins. Salins are the best. This hardware is like really kind of balancing here tonight. Nothing lasts forever. That's, that's true. Somebody said that. Capper's tape. Duct tape saved the world. Breaks it up like this. Sometimes the screws get stripped and everything. You know? Yeah, I've got this, this fancy articulating thing. I got a few of them. That one's shot for some reason. <laughs> What do you think I should do, Terry? That's your business manager. Yeah. I want you to get cranking over there. So I can buy, so I can buy your stuff. Your value, yeah, that too. Which I will. The value of your property is just shot up. If this developer going to kidding me, maybe your assessment would be going up too. But. No, I mean, 
They just they just did assessment, so maybe we'll be okay for a few years. Well, don't be your commercial, you're not open. Yeah, you're not commercial. Time waits for no man, young man. Your place would be a hit. You know how many people talk about you in politics? I just, you know, I just don't know if like that's my bag to manage, like a to manage an, like a. A full, a full establishment. Like, really yeah, it's like I'm thinking, you know, the Lounge Academy thing, we could do it for fun. It's kind of like a club. You know, it's just, instead of people bringing their own, they'll, they'll, use, they'll, they'll, they'll use ours now. You know, well, you can which, build it up too and sell it too, you know. You always got to think that option. Build the, build the business up? Yeah. 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 Well, you're a long term guy, yeah. too. You know, it all depends on your, your position in life. Right you're happy, you change I mean, the thing is, if I had, I'm, I've kind of been uh, vindicated for my lameness because if I had, like, if, if I had gone out, like, everybody said, why don't you just get a loan? You know, it'll only take $300,000, put in a commercial kitchen, have the place done, get yeah. open. Uh -huh. I would have been wiped out when COVID, when the pandemic hit. Good point. Like I would, I can, I was, on, I was better off than anybody else downtown. I know. Just, just because I had nothing to lose. You survived the mess. Well, as long as you're making an income and so forth, you know. Well, I'm not doing that, but, but even, even that is better than what, or uh, you know, everybody else suffered. Everybody took some big hits. Yeah. My business dropped to fifty-two hundred thousand when the COVID hit. Could see places closing and places uh, opening three, four days a week, you know. Plus the price increases. Everybody's got all my restaurants have to raise their prices, their menu prices. Their I mean, is, is 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 it was probably I would I would imagine you could tell me otherwise, but that it was easier easier for you to, to maybe to a degree to scale. Um, it, it's always horrible when you got to shrink the staff though when you have built them. I know how that is. You get your team that you want. You just don't want to let go of them. I know. But um, I think it's even harder for the restaurant just because they've got they're so they're so labor intensive. That's a good point too. Hey, listen, everybody's got ideas. You got to do what you got to do. I, I'm just looking at. If it. I knew how to do that, I really admire restaurant tours. But I, I just I just don't. You know, I've been I've been studying it and learning different things, and you're doing the. the, the the little levels of food service I've been doing, like yeah. the donuts and then the hot dogs. I've actually learned a lot, of, more than I knew about food, because there's, yeah. there's a lot of nuts and bolts to it. You know, like the equipment and the... Uh, well, you know, it's, it's like the Greeks. You know, they start with their families. The Greeks, they start their kids in the kitchen washing dishes. And, and you know, and you're working a couple sides here. And then you might be a waiter for a little while. You know, they just... They, they're grown into it. See, I, w I wasn't exposed to that. I know what you're yeah. So it's, it is a learning process. It, it's a lot. I know, if they threw it to you all at once, whoa. And then these, you know, these, 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 uh, these players downtown are like really smart and really experienced. And, 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 and they don't last forever. They've got a high turnover. And these, guys with, and these are guys with experience. And that was without the pandemic. Right. These guys, like, like I'm going to beat them at their game? No way. And yeah, yeah, you're right. It's easy for me to say, you know. It's a, it's a real attractive, glamorous business because, you know, yeah. it's fun and, and you, you're kind of, well, you, you're it's like at, hosting a party in a way, you know. You're at a great location there. As long as you can, you know, pay the taxes and have some fun, that's great. That's, you know, that's what I'd like to do, you know, just uh, keep it sustainable like that. But I would like, I do want to keep adding licenses to it and bring back Lounge Academy, but, but it'll be basically the same, but it'll be commercially licensed. Right. And you know. Get some music going if you want to open when you feel like if, it. If I want to open another day, then we can do it. I can stand behind the bar. You don't want to get the full kitchen and all that. No. Like you say. No. Probably 200K for a kitchen. Yeah. You know, and then you got to deal. Then you're committed. With, then you got to deal with the temperamental chefs. Then you got a whole back of the house. What's going, the house. The back, what's going out the back door? And yeah, the bartenders. I've seen, I've seen it. Before. Yeah, and those are things like you really got to know the business. Those people going blindly. They if they know more than you, you're screwed. Hit it, Leon. <laughs>
But, you know, if I could have like a, a nice lazy piano bar in there and like if I decide I want to open, you know, instead of just a Friday night with our lounge cadets, decide, yeah, it's Saturday night, I'm going to throw the sign on and just let the public one, maybe the hotels, and I'll be in there, you know, and if, if nobody comes in, that's fine. If, if 10 people come in and I get them some drinks and play the piano, talk to them. You could do some private parties, too. You could do private parties. You know, you don't want to do a kitchen, let somebody cater it for you. You know, you charge the rent and you still can sell drinks. You just can have, like, a small kitchen behind the bar, just for, like, bar, you know. You know, all my best customers, like, remember Ulrich's? You had a steam table back there. You had a little grill. And it was fine. You did, you did some uh, soups and chilies with the little steam table. Yeah, that's the extent I'd like to take it to. Because like, my kitchen is too far away from the front of the house. You need a staff to use did, that kitchen. You get to, or you'd be running back and forth all night. The most successful places were there. The little steam table back there with the grill. You get to if nobody shows up, you can almost handle it yourself. I got an old bar. You should come out some because you're all busy. I'm trying. My buddy John Hopkins at the Buffalo Bar and Grill on Louisiana Street. He's got the perfect situation. Memorabilia in this place. You're always busy on a Friday night. Though. Some other time. Some time out. I'd love to make the rounds with you to some of your customers. Well, this particular Friday night, this is Buffalo. Call us if you're ever free on a Friday night. I'm going to take you down to this place. It's hilarious. The Buffalo Bar with John Hopkins. Call me sometime when, you, when you're free on it. Okay. You know, the game will go up. What, what, what time do you go? Oh, you know, cocktail hour, 6, 7 o'clock. When you're, you're not doing a gig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sometimes I get canceled. Call us, get Mary up. Oh, Tina and Earl have a blast. Oh, yeah. Excuse me one minute. Watching Lounge Academy Epilogue. That was an interview with Terry Rothschild. He knows all the restaurants inside and out. He sells them their paper goods. Justine Job, you look bright and lovely uh, whenever I see you. traffic down here uh, in a few years, right? They're good though. They always they always come over if I'm selling something. Those, 
those feds are great. Sometimes there's this one, this, this one team that comes over. Like they come over for, hot, for donuts. And they would they would double team me because they're like they're like working as partners, right? And they they can't stop. So they're double teaming me like to, to see if I slip up. You're like that night, good guy, bad guy, you know. Team. It's like I know what you guys are doing. I, I always tell them that I mean, my career was training those guys every day. I, I did. You come back to it, and it's called kidding on the square. You're serious. <laughs> kidding on the square. I never heard that one. It's a funny thing. I look at you, I get a thrill. I never knew. Isn't it a pity? We never met before. Here we are at last. It's like a dream, the two of us, a perfect team. Isn't it a pity we never met before? Imagine all the lonely years we've wasted. Yeah. 
You're amazing. Thank you. I'm going to be able to open that place pretty soon at Ontario. Bring them on. But I really like being here right now because um, it, it's, it, it'll help me when we do open because I've got experience now in, in public, you know, where it's not just my friends coming over and, you know, where, where I could actually blow it big. It's just a whole different dynamic, you know, it's fun. And you could, I could invite, I could advertise and all these things I couldn't do, you know, in a private place. You crawl before you walk. Yeah. Here we are at the big staler. We're at the top of the mountain, right, Kathy? Yeah, it's amazing. But Doug Jamal says he wants me back. Yeah. I was very happy to hear that. been that way forever. Thank you, Kathy. Kathy Moses, ladies and gentlemen, there she goes. Off to another show business rendezvous. It's still easier than my place. I don't. I don't have the vacuum. Yeah. What? You gotta take all this with you? Yeah. Yeah. It's. So I got a little cart. I wheel it down the street. Uh, I mean, I'll give you a hand if you want. Oh no. Hey, listen, I've been doing all my life. size two cap, size forty back. You know what I mean? So I've been doing that. Well, thank you, everybody. so much. Right, ladies and gentlemen? Okay. okay, well, thank you for tuning in, everybody. Yeah, it was a pleasure. 
a lot of fun. And uh, Tina's coming back. I'm talking to the home audience. They love Tina. Well, good night, everybody at home, and we'll we'll see you all uh, next Friday night. We'll we'll do it all again. Yeah. On that note. On that note. Good night, Mr. and Mrs. America. Good night, Mr. and Mrs. America, wherever you are. And all ships at sea. And all ships at sea. Terry writes all my material. <laughs> He's going to be my business manager, too. I don't want to be the big man. Well, somebody has to. Hey, listen, you got a house. I see it's up there. I'll see this fix. I'll put this thing. When you write, I was thinking grandiose plans for the world. Wait a minute. When you write. I'm not the guy to do it. I mean, I wouldn't hire me to do that. <laughs> but you know what? You put, you put some equity in the place. You put some peace in the world. Especially with this family company. Yeah, well, well. You know, people throw offers at me. I'll look at them. You know, but I'm not. I'm not. I'll be. I'll be. Even if it like lightning struck, and you know, I got like four times market value, and you, you just had to take it. Yeah, you know, I I'd, I'd be sad at the same time. You know, because I have so much fun down here. But I guess we. in a year? You might, uh, huh? that soon? You're thinking about uh, that soon, yeah. backing it up? Wasn't that a Japanese era? That soon? No, I'm not saying. Do you have like a succession plan for your no, business? I, I got a couple guys in mind. I want to get a few bucks out of it. I hired, I got two pins in my bag. No, you do. Yeah. But I want to do stuff while I still have a little help, you know? Yeah. Well, that's smart. Hey, as long as you're able to do that, it's a, I would share, I was, I tell him how, if you ever got a, you don't go any farther, you might wait for me. I got a kid in this one cute little car, and I'm off in the car, and I'm talking to him. Louisiana Street. Oh, I love it. Have you ever been to John Hawkins? No, I have not. We'll do that sometime when we get canceled. Yeah. It's called full memorabilia. What do they have? If not, we could do it in January once we get canceled. Yeah, we could. Yeah, we get canceled here. <laughs> no, I gave you cover my car, though. Okay. Just, you know, we have time. We'll make it. We'll move our busy schedule. Yeah, that sounds fun. This place is really like this. Buffalo yeah. Barry Mill. Buffalo Barry Mill on Louisiana Street. Yeah, it's a great name. It's yeah, old, it is a good name. Old, it's an old first world car. Yeah. And he only opens on Friday nights, but he's got the patio and the gardens. And you should see the memorabilia. It's a oh. no shot, no, no scrap. It's sure. all original stuff. I found it with a major league baseball player. So it's Buffalo stuff? Yeah, they are. Like, yeah, okay. You're going to flip when you see this place. So some Friday night. Oh, I'd love Oops. to see it. Yeah. yeah. Next time we get canceled, yeah, we'll go over there. Yeah. And That's he's so got good. a little steam table and grill. Mary, and move over a little. Move closer. No, move closer to Terry. Oh, uh oh. So you're in the shot. I saw I was here? Yeah, that's fine. You're just you're just I couldn't have both of you in the shot at the same time before. Let them try. about learning about tonight even just that I just had no idea existed. You were telling me about the other place out here. Oh, the Riviera. Sea country. Yeah. And then the Riviera oh. place, the place on Yeah, the uh, Westfield uh, where Jay Dreff played out in Westfield. Oh, that was yeah. awesome. The Performing Arts Center in the The Westfield. Yeah. Yes. And they yeah. Yeah. not Westfield, it's a Yes, it's Westfield. Right before Kissing Bridge. Yeah. Really okay. cool. Okay. 
I know, interesting seeing places, new places. Are you, you going to start, stop playing? Let me see, he's, he's packing up. Yeah, is that? Work in the, work in the room. <laughs> Uh, wow. Is there a lot of... Uh, <laughs> Don't touch your hair anymore. Yeah, he covered like the oh. oh, 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 It's like a little kid when you go with no. no, his, his, hair, his hairdresser like is Mr. Gigi, so what are you leaving Mr. Gigi Well, well what I usually do... He cuts his own hair. I, I try to do it, but I, see, I didn't do it. I try to do it like as early after Friday night, so that's time to heal by the next time. In case I, in case I so it's not good. Good. You know, what if you're like, what if you're like really put a hole in, you know? No. Be a real Hello. How are you? Yeah. Want to come sit, baby? What a talent. Are you taking your break? Yeah, I'm my break. Did you want to try the piano? No. No one's here. No. So I got that. Holly's house. like newer classical pianist. We don't speak on different languages. We're a different place. Yeah. I understand. Jazz pianist up from Mars, classical pianist up from Mars. Oh, Mary might get up from Mars. Oh, Mary might get up from Mars. No, I'm like Holly. We just, no, yeah. just leave us alone. Yeah, just leave us alone. We're fine. We enjoy. We'll do it at home in the privacy of our own home. We're a different species. Yeah. I'm shy. Different species of musicians. Do it. Yeah, and we've got some drinks, and we're going to get up and play Shopin' at this point. And they're so emotional ah, about I love that. Thank you. It's like, you're actually going to take a shower. What would you like to get? I'm going to go up and get it. Get you something. 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 We're not going to ask you to do any more. So settle down. Settle down. We're satisfied with being with the five of us. Maybe like to sing a song. Whoa. El Capone. Sing a song. I could play some music, and we could... They say that like singing is the most terrifying thing for people to do in public. Oh, really? Well, no, it's singing. In public and, speaking. And oh, playing. no, I love the singing music oh, and, and in public. public. Yeah. yeah, I, I get it. Because I, I keep class. thinking I can sing. Like, you know, because you still can dance. The, 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 the. You could sing all three at the same time. I probably still is ending. In my mind. Yeah, you betcha. How old are you? 66. Oh. Get your you're kids. Yeah, I'm 71. Come okay. on. So you don't even I know what I'm talking about with my music. This look at him. Oh, I think so. He's like he doesn't Mr. Work Clean. Wait, wait. Yeah. Oh. He sleeps in a bed of formaldehyde. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sister, did you bed of formaldehyde? I do leave some looking young. Right? Power, bed of formaldehyde. You should preserve looking good. You sleep in a bed of formaldehyde. That's right. <laughs> Don't listen to him. He'll just go on and on. I have to take him home. It's like my granddaughter. Grandma, she, okay. she shuts me up right away. I gotta do something. <laughs> I like the new haircut. What new haircut? It's a new do. style. I've been growing it out for two years. No, but it's a you know, style. Because it is not a good one. Alex. Another yeah. one by Mr. Gigi. I like the color. I, like the I know. Yeah. My 96-year-old mother said, hey, I like your color, Holly. Oh, oh, please. Thanks, Mom. We had a great, How's she doing we had a great and Sunday she lunch with her, birthday celebration with her. After that, at, at, at the club, <laughs> we had a great um, birthday celebration with her. Sportsman. Didn't we? Yeah, there was a couple of years. Oh, she loved it. She loved it. Well, she loved the big band. That was awesome. Yeah. That's nice. Come on. Howard, I miss you so much. I want to bring pizzas over and I want Mitch to give me a ride. Stop talking about pizza. Did I? I love pizza. No, you're not. But you're eating only hot dogs? What? I do eat a lot of hot dogs. Usually every day I'll have like hot dogs for lunch. Oh, oh, don't even talk. Don't even talk. Don't even talk. Stop skin. talking. Did you wow. see that last thing about the Tondos? Yeah, I heard they reopened. Finally. Oh, my God. You guys took me there for the very first time. <laughs> oh, my so God. So few years ago. I understand they have redone the whole place. Yeah, I used to know Al, the owner. Of it. He was married to the Tondos' daughter. Yeah. I want to go there. I hear you I have to like order at the counter now, and then they deliver. Oh, it to the table. So I could like whenever I want.
like the bar, you just kind of stand up. Oh, it's, it's, not it's, 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 it's not the same as water. Water and water. Carrie has one over. I think the um, write up was amazing in Buffalo Rising. I'll have to check that out. I used to know one of my customers in the old days. I would love to go there. Hustle is hysterical. We look like crazy. He has a stand. People will be going there for a while. I wait until the newness stops. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Call I'm Tina. Sure this place it's the boil, the boil stuff is, is Oh God, yeah. never, never, never. That's that's the business model though, because they can just like you know, hand them out as fast as they can. Take their money, you know. But charcoal, I like it in downtown. I mean, this is these are the most interesting people in the world that are down here. All right, so I see the store. I, 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 will, so I, I get to talk to them while I'm making their hat dog. And more importantly, you know, Douglas Jamel. He's a developer from Buffalo. Well, it was really great, you know. Um, well, I mean, everybody leaves a Doug Jamal meeting excited. He's amazing. I'm sorry, I don't know. Douglas Jamal, he's Jamel, the fine. developer. He, he owns the building. He owns the building. The center. The developer. That it's a foot of share. share. Uh, uh, you know, he, he just bought He bought that and renovated the whole thing. Mall. And he's bought. He, he got the hired. Got the, yes, he did bought the Boulevard Mall. And, and the, 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 um, 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 the Psych Center. Oh, let's not he, forget M&T Tower. Yeah. But the Psych Center, he promised that all the weddings that, that that would go on. Like the Hotel Henry, you mean? Hotel yes. Henry, yes. yes. Yeah, but that kind of went. Now, now, now. He is. COVID. He's the new developer. He's the new developer for, the yeah. new developer yeah. for it. Jamal, J-A-M-E-L, and he's going around. I don't know where he gets the money. Trico building, God, I haven't seen work Where do they ever get the money? Like, he's good, <laughs> and he's good on his stuff. He's good here. Best thing in the world ever happened to Buffalo, this guy. I hope, but then again. Yeah, I wish we were 10 We're the best people years. that ever happened. The people, the people. We are 10 years younger. Uh, there you go. We're the youngest we're ever going to be. The Gwent. How old are you? 66. Get your kids. Uh, 66. You need to make a, 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 a voyage. And what? You need to take you're, a voyage. Re Reminting. <laughs> Oh, well, yeah, so security said, uh, yeah, we well, can live another year. Okay, that's good. Let's go uh -huh. do it. You know what I mean? You just got to get out of bed. Uh -huh. Well, you do that. If you but get out of the house, yeah, then the pressure just makes you a live person. If you stay in bed, that's exactly how it goes. Yeah, it's self-loathing. As soon as you wake up and you're so out of bed. <laughs> yeah, there's that self-loathing. Was that movie, Deer and Loathing in Las Vegas? If you get out of the house, have a cup of coffee, and out of the door you go. Never know what's going to come out of her mouth. I know, right? You're like a cat. I don't know. George working tonight? He's been working all week. I'm you got some trips coming up? We just came back from Sedona for two weeks. Oh, how'd you like Sedona? Oh. Did you go to the Aura, the mystical area? Honey, we went up there. No, but the... We the, went to the, the, uh, the Vortex. A Vortex. Oh, yeah. How George was it? Felton. Pretty? We missed it. Something happened. We were there and we he didn't said like it. He felt the energy. It was like electric energy coming up in his Oh, up in his It felt good, painful, whatever. It was good. It felt good. It was energizing to him. Uh, we love that trip. We, we started north of Delta. <laughs> oh, Arizona. It was amazing. Everywhere we went, it was two hours. It was in yeah. New, Mexico, New Mexico or Arizona? Yeah. Well, probably Arizona. You, Phoenix it, was two hours from Sedona. We caught, we went up. Scottsdale was almost two hours from S right, Sedona. Was, we caught this old ghost town called Jerome. Jerome. We Did you go right to Jerome? Jerome? Oh, yeah. 
That was right near Sojourn. Yeah, I think it was yeah. two hours. Then we drove up to the Grand Canyon. We didn't do the Grand Canyon because we've been there already. Okay. But, oh, Sedona was just amazing. We yeah. did the uh, hot air balloon ride. Did over. you? Oh. I always get nervous there. You run into a power line or something. Oh, oh there's no power lines there. That's yeah, true. That was nervous. We were just that one. was incredible. I like it out there. If I had a move, the problem is I got no, no water out there. A guy walked, I just, an old friend of mine just moved back from Vegas. This is in five years. I guess it would be dead there's no water out there. That, that Hoover Dam is there. Hey, what do you think of the Incas and the Aztecs? Destroyed civilizations, they had no water. Who knows how long this is going to last? I told my daughter and my son-in-law I'm very concerned about climate change. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Well, she's got a degree in her own. She can always get it. Yeah, we got to get out of there at the right time. Oh, no, it's like, I hope it's not as dastardly as this no, one buddy told me. No, I am concerned about that problem. Very concerned about climate change. That's what that's all about. Because if this keeps up, it won't come down. We got water here, then you can't touch our Great Lakes. That's right. I said, why don't you move back out to the northeast? No, we don't want to come out there. I said, well. And We're plus, about the only area. And you're here. selfish too because you want them closer to you. <laughs> well, it's not only that. I'm I am kidding. very concerned about climate change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Things are coming back this way, though. This Jamel with this, this mm -hmm. money is in there, so I can't believe it. He has some ideas. He must know something. They know a lot, these guys. More than we can ever dream of knowing. Exactly. Place a considered bargain basement right now for what he's getting in there for. I wish I knew a percentile of what these people were. Oh, I know. And still, like how it's got the round table next door. It's a to do this right now. Let's just slow down. He's got the right idea. We took you there once, didn't we? Yeah, I've been there a few times. Yeah, yeah is it going to open that up again soon? He's working on it. Slow, you know, a little bit at a time. No big nightclub and all that. Huge restaurant. I want to get to that big sweet lounge. Where's that? At the Lafayette. Oh, yeah. They're having a soft opening soon. With the customer, man. I'll talk to Rocco. I'll talk to my son. My son works for Rocco. Let us know, will you? Sometimes those grand openings too crowded. It's crazy. Yeah, oh, right, right, right. I, yeah, I remember. Yeah, people were. were yeah, there was a wall. There was a wall of snow on, on, on the way. And everybody on that side of the wall yeah, couldn't, couldn't leave their home. Yeah. But you could see the wall. And we didn't get it so bad. Yeah, we're talking about Howard. This is the Manhattan. It's really good. But I'm on keto, so this is the Manhattan. Dry. With a dry boat. It's just so good. I have no clue about cocktails. I know I'm normally a wine drinker. Are you out of here? We have so much in common. That was the most severe. Plus, on keto. Okay. Tell me about your experience. I always made bone broth because my mom taught me to do it, so I was kidding. But what? We're supposed to make bone Yeah, here's what you do. You just do a roast chicken and you put the bones in the crock pot and you cover it up with water and you leave it. <laughs> and there's your bone broth. So how's it been going through? I'm going on it. I love it. What I do is drink it, but I mostly put it in stuff. Um, well, I just started in, oh, how long? Um, oh, well, I did it three years, and I lost one six or seven pounds. Yeah, you lose a lot right away. Yeah. And then, I just started two weeks ago. Oh, come on. Yes, uh, so it doesn't so look a lot easy. I, I started it back, but I'm not doing too good because I'm, I'm drinking that. I love to drink wine. I'm starting to get on it. I'm so good at it. I like my wine and my drinks. 
Are you okay with pasta though, giving up pasta and bread? Me too, me too. Okay, good. You just thanked him with carrots. You don't drink any other carrots. You have a few blends. A day of just, it doesn't even A day? Well, I have to say, I, I love to drink wine. So we'll have a couple of days. Not a day. Okay, well then you're, you're out of the loop. Okay, so you've got no problem if I can do it. I the loop. Silence that voice. 
you know, just say that and even some see what, people online, what I see them on YouTube going, and you eat chicken breast. You don't even have to mess. You know, you know, you know, you know, you've got it, and which is lucky. I like the chicken legs better. You get to eat the chicken legs. Do you? Yeah, so I was going to be playing at the, at the Lafayette. We do so love him. He's amazing. Oh, so this place is played out. He's 